Look, with Avatar's newfound rise and prominence on streaming, a basically brand new fandom, the creator's exit from the live action adaptation, and rumors in the industry, it seems a new Avatar iteration is inevitable. But what exactly would this new installment look like? And more importantly, what could it look like? With the comics, in expansive lore, and more secrets to uncover, what could this adaptation give us that we haven't seen before? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Would this new story be in the past or the future? Would we see a whole new cast in Avatar, or a continuation of the last Airbender or Korra storyline? Would it be crazy to ask for an Avatar anthology? Can we please just get a show centered on Suki already? There's a lot to answer here, so without further ado, let's talk Avatar. Let's start with what we know here. This all started when the CEO of Viacom CBS directly teased that Paramount Plus, the rebranding of CBS All Access, could bring new Avatar content to these services. According to an article from Nickel Live, Bagish also suggested that the platform could also tap Nickelodeon's Avatar franchise and MTV's The Challenge for new original series. The quote being, In terms of Paramount Plus, we've announced some new entertainment franchises that we're bringing to Plus. The Godfather, SpongeBob, The Criminal Mind spin out. But under the covers, our preview launch showed that there's other franchises that work too that have potential. Things like MTV's reality show The Challenge, things like Nick's animated library series, Avatar, and all this is really the tip of the iceberg. He goes on to say, So you can safely assume that upcoming announcements will include new original videos variants of them for Paramount+. Plus, But I'm not going to get ahead of things and reveal them until we get much closer to the launch. Really leaving us on the edge of our seat here. I love how we just nonchalantly brought up a new Avatar series like it wouldn't be the biggest thing ever. And look, okay, although this is far from confirming that a new Avatar project is in the works, it at least confirms that Nickelodeon and Viacom CBS are open to looking into expanding the Avatar universe. And to me, this name drop feels less like a general nod towards the Avatar franchise, and instead a direct acknowledgement of the series research in immense popularity during quarantine, with the original series and later Korra being added to Netflix, breaking records, and stirring hype for the upcoming live action series. Uh, speaking of things that have an uncertain future. Look, you may or may not know the story at this point. For a couple years now, there's been a live action avatar in the works. It was pretty hype, but shortly after the resurgence, the creators came forward with tragic news. They would no longer be involved in the live action series, but their individual statements both implied that they would be interested in future avatar content. Kunitsuko stating how he'll remain deeply involved in the avatar universe, referring to the ongoing comics and novels, whereas DiMartino straight up said the resurgence in popularity was inspired inspiring to see. This is great news, especially because after Korra, they both said they didn't want to do a series on another avatar. But hey, who said it would be a third avatar? I mean, after all, it was Aang's story that really took off in the summer. Korra was also popular in Netflix, but didn't really reach the height of discussion or viewership that The Last Airbender did. Theoretically, and follow me here, any future animated installment of Avatar could still follow Team Avatar after the original series, and there's plenty of stories to tell. Which is my really slick segue into our next section. What exactly exactly would this new installment look like? Again, assuming the creators would return for a hypothetical new series, I think the best move at this point would be expanding upon the lives of the Last Airbender characters, whether that's Team Avatar or characters that serve supporting roles like the Kiyoshi Warriors. Like I said, please give us a Suki series. I'm gonna thirst over this till this happens. I'm gonna get a hashtag started, I don't care. A wonderful aspect about Avatar's world when it comes to story potential is that there isn't a need for insanely high stakes to tell a great story. The war against the Fire Nation can remain the biggest conflict these characters survived through in terms of scale, but if you told me Team Avatar had to deal with, let's say, the Red Lotus in its founding years, maybe comprised of a roster that differs from the Korra antagonists, I would believe it, and I definitely want to see it. It just makes sense that they would have to deal with smaller but powerful forces throughout the rest of their lives. Case in point, Tarlock. Even though it would be an absolute fan service, this would also be a cool time to explore an older Team Avatar, just not in their adult years. Between their childlike years and the adult years, years we see in core flashbacks. I mean, they could even expand on those flashbacks. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Swole Aang is the best Aang. But despite that, I'd love to see Aang, Katara, Sokka, Zuko, and Toph in their late teens, early 20s, aging these characters so that they're closer to the modern audience. Even though Korra already began providing more mature, complex stories for the series, nothing's stopping them from doing a similar move with the original cast. Speaking of Korra, who's to say we couldn't get an installment in the Korra era? I mean, that show was already doing exactly what we're talking about. Introducing conflicts that weren't on the scale of 100 
100 Year War with personal stakes sprinkled within. I could see why people would want The Last Airbender's animated timeline to remain complete at Sozin's Comet, but Korra kinda has the perfect setup to continually explore political conflicts until they have nothing left to say. I know Korra isn't as beloved as The Last Airbender, but between new fans of both series and renewed inspirations within the creators, I feel like there's interest and potential there, delivering a story that wows people on both sides. The thing about streaming is that it's flexible for different formats and stories that may not have been accepted for linear television. With how vast the Avatar series is, coupled with the state of streaming, they don't exactly need to commit to a long-term project. Maybe one year we get, say, a new animated Last Airbender movie. Then the next year we get a limited series continuing Korra storyline. What about an anthology series jumping all over the Avatar universe, even going to different time periods? One episode could be on the Last Airbender Kyoshi Warriors, the next could be about Kyoshi herself. They don't even have to focus on the Avatar specifically, just stories within the universe. We could get a whole episode on what happens to Jet's crew after Jet himself kicks the bucket. I know we got the story of the first Avatar, but how crazy would it be to see the second, the immediate follow-up. What a weird and confusing life that must have been. I have always said this and I will continue to say it. Avatar set itself up perfectly for an anthology series. Maybe this is just my weird super specific opinion, but I feel like it would work so well. But with all of these promising signs, I think it's still fair that we look at what could go wrong. Now I'm not trying to be a pessimist, but sequels are never always perfect. The troubling factor here is that although Avatar The Last Airbender blew up on Netflix, the quote we have is basically implying that new material could end up on Paramount+. Plus. Another streaming service and paywall that could exclude newcomers and longtime Avatar fans from accessing any future installments. And look, this is becoming a pretty typical trend in the world of streaming, with so many new services popping up from the companies that own the television shows that explode in popularity thanks to Netflix directly. What we've seen is that they tend to pull the shows off Netflix for their own benefit, or services will just outbid Netflix when it's time for the rights to be renewed. That's how we get shows like Community bouncing around from like the same three different streaming services or talks of even The Office eventually leaving Netflix so that NPC can put it on their streaming service. And although I doubt Avatar is leaving Netflix again anytime soon, Nick straight up has a partnership with them and its exposure, it does make sense that they would put new content behind their own direct paywall. And as it stands now, Paramount Plus is already going to have a handful of new animated series with familiar IPs, such as Camp Coral, the SpongeBob spinoff, and the new CGI Rugrats reboot, so the potential new Avatar series ending up on there instead of on Netflix just makes sense from a business standpoint. But just because it makes sense from a business standpoint doesn't mean it's the best decision. On top of that, Netflix is continually raising its prices, its most popular plan only being $1 off from HBO Max at $14. CBS All Access, aka Paramount Plus, is only $10 for its most expensive plan, so perhaps more people could go to Paramount Plus, obviously more for just animation, and be content with its offerings on there, Avatar just being the cherry on top. Viacom owns a terrifying amount of the entertainment world. I truly wouldn't put it past people to save a few bucks and switch over, or just add Paramount Plus to their roster of ever-growing streaming services. At the end of the day, it all boils down to budget and personal preference. Especially if the person already has multiple streaming services, let's say Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video, they could decide to swap out one of those for Paramount Plus. But this is too much streaming talk, let's get back to Avatar. The point is, fans are being scattered across multiple platforms, and that would not be ideal, especially for fostering growth for a brand new series. In a perfect world, it'd be awesome if any new content were on both Netflix and Paramount Plus, but it's fair to say we won't be that lucky. And if this new Avatar series is on a streaming service that not a lot of people have or just don't want to pay for, we could see the series potentially flop, despite how big Avatar is. Let's also just be realistic here. Avatar has seen a huge revival. There is a surplus of new dedicated fans, but Avatar being revived on Viacom's end is pretty much purely a money move, which means things could get ugly if history repeats itself and the creators end up not wanting to be involved in the process of a new animated installment, which would be heartbreaking. Then there's the possibility of competition with the Netflix live action series. Netflix will have their own avatar, and who knows, knowing the mainstream audience, they could favor the live action reboot for both accessibility and tone, because straight up, animation still needs more respect. At this point, anyone who goes on TikTok has seen Avatar, but not everybody wants to watch a cartoon, especially one from 2005, which is why this live action reboot actually has the potential to be so big and could pull in even more Avatar fans. And 
And if Paramount Plus decides to pull this brand new Avatar series behind a paywall, potentially without the creators, we could see a weird future where a live action adaptation of the original series could be more popular than an actual Avatar series. But I will say that is mad speculation and honestly a lot of pessimism. As it stands now, we live in a world where the animated series far surpasses any live action Avatar content, but I do not want to think about that one. But with all that said, I just want to close on Avatar's future as a whole. At the end of the day, Avatar is a franchise, and no matter how you shake it, its 15 plus years of prominence in pop culture has proven it has Star Wars-like potential in terms of a brand. This world, these characters, they aren't going anywhere anytime soon, as long as studios actually enjoy making money. So while things like comics have proven to keep the story alive, it's almost naive at this point to say the series will stick to that limited format. My big dream is that we one day have Avatar fans making new iterations of the universe 10, 20 years from now, maybe even sooner. But no matter what, with this all taking into consideration, no matter what, Avatar's future is bright and we will one day get a reboot centered on Suki. That's right, you guys scam. That was the point of this entire video. I just wanted a Trojan horse, my want for a Suki original series. I'm gonna get it trending on Twitter, I swear to God. But that all being said, I do wanna know what you guys think about this. Would you even want another Avatar series? Would you watch it? Would you hate it? Let us know in those comments down below or tweet to us at Roundtable Vids or me at it's Retro Nemo. If you wanna consider helping out the Roundtable, you can support us on Patreon and get exclusive access to scripts and avatars or become a member of the channel. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo. This is an Avatar video, and I will see you next time. Peace.